Hello YouTubers. Uh, this clip is mainly designed for the new ham operators or those studying for their license. Uh, you've probably seen a lot of these components in your license guide and, and uh, are kind of wondering what they might look like in real life. So I'm just going to show you some components and so that'll help help you get an idea of what some of these things look like I guess. I'm going to have to move through them rather quickly since I don't have a lot of time on the YouTube clip. <coughs> um, these are resistors, what your typical resistor looks like. Uh, they come in different sizes rated for different power ratings in the circuit. Uh, but these are all kind of typical resistors. These are power type resistors here. Used in most every electronic circuit. There's also variable resistors, and they are used for volume controls as one thing, as well as many other uh, uses to control the resistance in a circuit, but uh, typically this would be mounted in a radio with the knob on the front as a volume control. It's a variable resistor. There's circuit mount type variable resistors that are designed to be set one time and left there. Here's a stereo volume control. They call these potentiometers, or POTS for short, and this controls, uh, one controls the left and one the right side of the audio system in a stereo. Um, we also have capacitors. These are variable capacitors, found mainly in your older type radios now, but they change uh, tuning in a circuit. That's what a variable capacitor looks like, a typical one. They also come in circuit mount styles, so you can set them and leave them. There's also electrolytic type capacitors used a lot in audio circuits. If you see something like this in a circuit, it's an electrolytic capacitor. They come in various sizes and shapes as well as these huge ones that you've maybe seen in car stereo systems and that type of thing and they store a charge if you apply a voltage to them they do store that charge and these huger ones uh, larger ones you can even get a little zap off of if you uh, are not careful with what you're doing in a circuit capacitors also come in these packages little discs you probably seen them in electronic circuits. They also come in forms like this, different shapes and sizes. A few in my collection there. And they also come in very small sizes, very small sizes. And the components I'm going through now are are not used that much anymore in your modern uh, style equipment. They use surface mount devices, which I'm not going to get into at this time. Uh, this is mainly for circuits you'll probably be working on or, or uh, designing circuits of your own. You'll be using components like this. But surface mount devices are very small. There's packages of 10 across here that I have, just to give you an idea. But uh, we'll cover that another time, possibly. Then we have transistors. Transistors uh, look like this, these little black guys, and they have three legs on them. And you'll see them a lot in circuits. Kind of hard to see on here, maybe. But they're usually uh, three legged devices. And they also come in different shapes and sizes. Here's a much larger sized resistors, and uh, all designed for different uses. Might give you a little idea. There's also what we have is called diodes here. We have diodes. They're usually a black device with a silver band on one end. They are polarity sensitive. They do have to be mounted in the correct polarity. And they also come in many sizes. And another form of the diode is the light emitting diode, an LED. You see these a lot. Uh, the red LED is probably the most common. If you see a little red light on your radio or whatever, 
They do come in many sizes. I like to use these bright white LEDs to illuminate, or illuminate uh, front panels and replace the regular pilot light bulbs. The LEDs last a lot longer. But this is a little collection of colored uh, light emitting diodes. I have a little circuit here. You'll see there's LEDs used as lights here on the circuit. These are what you call integrated circuits, ICs. You'll see them a lot in circuits. They have many legs on them and they contain thousands, many times thousands of transistors in one circuit, so they call them integrated circuit. Other samples of those here. That's kind of what they look like. And they also come in can style with several legs on them. And we also have transformers. This is a type of a power transformer. They're used in power supplies to convert voltages from your 110 volt AC off the wall socket down to the voltage you need for your radio, uh, typically 12 volts or so, used in a power supply. There's also audio type transformers. And they're used in audio circuits to drive speakers to match a circuit up to speakers, headphones, and other uses in audio. That's what an audio transformer looks like. These are forms of coils. Just a uh, wire wound around a form to form a coil for a circuit where that is needed. And uh, of course I'm not going to go into what all these are needed for. I'm just giving you a basic overview of what the components look like at this time. I'll also show you one more thing here. A couple of connectors that are common in ham radio use. This is a PL259 connector. That's what they look like. You've probably seen them before. This is type made for the larger type RG8 cable. You can also use a reducer to convert it to other sizes of smaller cable, RG58 and that type of thing. That's your typical PL259. I do like to use the silver Teflon connectors. They seem to solder up the best. Here's another connector, it's called an N connector. You'll see these used a lot in VHF and UHF work. A little less loss and a good quality connector. Several other connectors, but that's the only two I have on hand to show you for now. Seven threes from WD0AKX.